everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Bucker Designs. This week I am focusing on the super cute Sweetest Cherries bundle from our new Stampin' Up! annual catalog, page 19. It's a punch bundle and it's my favorite. I absolutely love it. I couldn't stop creating with it. So this video is for a treat box and you guys know I love to find treats. Um, and here's one of the things I found. These are so easy to find. I found them at Walmart mini cherry fruit pies and it has taken every ounce of self-control in my body to not eat them i love these they're so delicious reminds me of my childhood remember when you could get those from mcdonald's i don't know does mcdonald's still sell those Whew, delicious okay so we're gonna make a little box to hold this this would be great i mean for any any reason i'm gonna leave it out for my mail lady when she comes to pick up all my mail all right the first thing we're gonna do is make that box so you're gonna need your simply scored and a piece of sweet sorbet that is seven by nine and a half now these measurements are over on my blog on a free pdf it has two other sweetest cherries projects so make sure you click the link here on youtube and go grab it all right on the seven inch side we're going to score it at just one and six now turn it and score the long side at half an inch four five and eight and a half now this is um i guess what you would call kind of a clamshell box where it's it the lid stays attached and folds over i've made this kind of box a thousand times kind of like a cream cheese a philadelphia cream cheese box um i never keep my cream cheese box but if you do <laughs> and you don't rip it open like i do i think this would be the kind of box that that would be all right burnish all your lines now take your scissors and down here where there's a skinny tab, we're gonna cut off those rectangles. Okay, get rid of them, we don't need them. Then when you do that, I want you to also cut the corners off of this little flap right here. Okay, just cut them off. Now along the sides, I'm gonna turn it over, it's a little bit easier to hold that way. Cut on right in the center of each score line. All right, I, I try to go right in the center because if you're off, if you're on the left of the score line or the right of the score line, it can mess up your box. Try to stay right in the center. Now these square tabs, I want you to cut just some, just the corners, okay? All right, now we're gonna do the same thing over here right up the center cut the corners and one more now I know little Debbie has lots of fruit pies or several you could make this for all different kinds of their fruit pies all right so here's what your piece looks like this is the lid over here where you have the skinny tab and these two sides are going to tuck down into the box and to make them easier to tuck down i want you to cut off the corners of those now don't cut the corners off of this one because that's the side of our box and we need it to be square so we don't want to cut those corners this is just going to help it slide into the box a little bit better now you can use the adhesive of your choice for this. Um, here in South Texas where I live, we're hot and muggy 90% of the time. So I have found that Tombow really does the trick. It, um, once it dries, it holds things in place. But our tear and tape, as well as our Stamp and Seal Plus would work as well. All right, now, I have squeezed those down behind the sides. Now to keep that from happening, you wanna grab a couple of little clothespins and these little clothespins are from Walmart. You can get like, I don't know, 50 of them for $2. I use them all the time. I use them sometimes on my projects to hold a tag onto the ribbon, but they get the most use being my hands <laughs> to hold my boxes closed. So you can see that's how it's gonna fit. So we're gonna set that aside, let it dry, and we're gonna make the cherries. Now I tried to make a variety of projects showing you a variety of ways to make the cherries. I have one where we watercolor, I have one where we stamp the images because the stamp set does have these beautiful cherries here. But this one, I wanted to use DSP. 
So I'm gonna cut two cherries. Now, if you wanna prevent wasting your paper, cut your DSP, I don't know, what is that? Maybe an inch and a half, an inch and a fourth, a strip that you can just stick in there and you won't waste all of that. For the stem, it's a little bit easier because you can use the edge, but you're also gonna get those leaves and I decided not to use the leaves on this project. Um, so you could either save them for another project or chunk them. Now that was granny apple green. I love granny apple green with sweet sorbet. It looks really cute. Okay, for the stamping, we're gonna use this big sweet image. It says sweet and it's photopolymer and I have found that large photopolymer stamps do best on my stamparatus. For whatever reason, sometimes they you know, when you stamp it, the middle kind of leaves a bubble. So I like to use it on my Stamparatus. And what I'm going to do, I've already got it on here. I'm going to stamp it on this grid paper. And that's going to help me know exactly where to put my strip of white. I really want it close to the edge. So I'm going to put it right there and lay my magnet down. Um, you could, if you if your stamp wasn't already on your Stamparatus, lay the stamp down on your white paper. Pick it up with your Stamparatus. You know, I'm not sure. This looks like maybe it's not in the right place. Maybe it needs to go lower. So, you know, I've already got ink on it. I'm afraid to take it off. I I do all my videos in a row, so it's inked up from the last project. Let's see if I can get this lined up. All right, let's see that I don't know guys I think I'm gonna have to take it off to make sure that we've got it exactly right it may leave a little bit of ink but that's okay because we're gonna stamp it right where it sits okay so I did it the right way now <laughs> I was trying to cheat okay now let's see there we go so obviously we need to ink it um, the reason I love the Stamparatus is because if you ink it stamp it and it doesn't get a solid image which well, that did pretty good, but but for the most time, most part, I with this one, I struggle getting a good solid image. I like to re-ink it and stamp it again, and mo boy, look at that. Nice and solid and a really good stamped image. Now, I've got, there's lots of options here on this stamp set. You've got, thank you for being so sweet, sweet friend, sweet day, uh, with you in it, um, Life is sweet with you in it, wishing you a sweet, you know, I mean, lots of combinations. All we're gonna do is life is sweet. This is a big image. So you'll find that you kind of have to be creative with how you wanna use it. Um, you know, it kind of becomes the focal point there of your, of your project. Now ahead of time, I cut out a stitched, scallop border from the pen flower dies and I'm going to adhere that right along the bottom and you know what I I'm going to actually cover up the stitching because I want it to just be real light and small so we're just going to get that scallop I cut a little bit longer just so that I wouldn't be too short trim that off now, all right we're going to emboss that background with our gingham embossing folder now you guys i have to admit i've lost my plates my cut and emboss plate so i've had to piecemeal together plates to work this week i've ordered a new set i don't know what happened if you know me you know i'm really bad at losing things my trash can sits on the other side of my die cutting table so i wonder if it just fell in but what you'll need for this embossing folder is plates one, two, and four. You don't need the clear plates, but you do need that skinny white one in the middle. Okay, let's see. Now this is gingham, and it doesn't really look like gingham to me, more like argyle or something, but it's super cute and I adore it. So I'm gonna take, um, let's, mount, let's mount it on a mat first. We've got a basic black cardstock mat, just, just slightly larger. Okay, and then we're gonna take this and adhere this across the bottom, leaving just a little bit of white showing underneath. Now grab your little polka dot cherries. Did I even say this is um, Sweet Sorbet Designer Series paper from the 2020, 
2022 to 2024 in color paper pack. It's got all five of the in colors. All right, let's put that right about there and that one kind of overlapping like that. And now we've got these two stems and I'm gonna just use a little dot of Tombow there and lay that on there. We gotta give it a few minutes to dry. There we go. Okay, let's see how our box is looking. Let's bring it back over. I think we've given it plenty of time to dry. And you can tuck all three tabs in if you want, but I'm leaving this front one out. I kind of like how it looks hanging over the edge. I'm going to use my favorite black and white gingham ribbon. I think black and white with sweet sorbet, cherries, I think it just all is perfect for each other. All right, so I'm going to tie this around. I'm going to tie the bow here on the front of my box like that. Grab your scissors, trim off those long tails there and get it nice and centered. And now we're going to sandwich it. I'm going to put my adhesive on the box because I don't want to flip that over. I don't think my stems are dry yet. Probably would be a lot easier putting it on the back of that, but I didn't give it enough time to dry. All right, so stick this down right in the center and you're done. It's Teacher Appreciation Month. These would make great teacher appreciation gifts. I think they're really fun. The Little Debbie um, fruit pies can be found in your area by using the Little Debbie Snack Finder. I'll link it on my blog. And make sure you click the link here on YouTube. Go back and visit my blog for the other two ideas. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Have a sweet day. Bye-bye.